Februar 2002. 22nd of February 2002. The suffragan Bishop of Cologne, Dr. Klaus Dick, comes to our church to open the shrine of St. Alban and to remove a part of the relic. It's to be handed over as a special gift to our partner parish, St. Albans, in England. Who was St. Alban? Pastor Peter von Steinitz explains. St. Alban was a Briton in the Roman army. On his shrine are the words Sanctus Albans Proto Marte Anglorum, which means he was the first English martyr. He was in the Roman army, a soldier, and he was as a martyr. He was probably a soldier in the Roman army. His dying words were, My name is Alban and I believe in the true and living God, creator of all things. The remains of St. Alban have been kept in a special shrine in Cologne since the 10th century. But how did the precious relics get there? In the 5th century, St. Germanus of Auxerre took part of the remains from England to Rome. Later, in the chaos of the Middle Ages, the remains that were kept in England were lost. The remaining relics were then taken to Cologne in the 10th century by Empress Theophanu. Till this day, St. Alban's remains have been kept here in the parish of St. Pantaleon, where the Empress too is laid to rest. In the year 2000, the shrine was relocated closer to the altar and protected behind a glass pane. The jewellery, woodwork and enamel are of incalculable value and testimony of the artistic craftsmanship of the time. The Anglican Cathedral of St. Albans, about 20 miles north of London. The cathedral stands in the exact location where in the year 2009 St. Albans was beheaded. The news of miracle healings where the martyr died soon attracted many pilgrims. The town became a place to pray and worship the saint. St. Albans today is a town of 80,000. In 1998, a small group of pilgrims set out from here on a trip to Germany. This first contact leads to a new friendship, which is deepened the following year when a group of parishioners from Cologne travel to England. In St. Albans, the group from Cologne learned that the shrine in honor of St. Alban is empty. Pastor Peter von Steinitz offers to give his Anglican friends a relic of the saint. His offer is accepted with enthusiasm. In February 2002, St. Alban's Shrine in Cologne is opened by suffragan Bishop Klaus Dick.
Between the bones, which are well preserved, is a small sachet of lavender, a rosary, and the remains of seals. All of these were probably added in more recent times. The saint's skull is wrapped in silk cloth decorated with a crown of jewels. Up until the 19th century, this crown was traditionally placed on the heads of the faithful during worship. And then the important moment. We will give the Church of St. Albans this shoulder blade as a relic. The other shoulder blade will remain here, which I think is a very nice gesture. This way we can keep a strong link between the two relics. It's a symbolic gift to mark the friendship. It was a very good idea of the local priest Peter von Steinitz to choose the two shoulder blades, which we were able to identify because they give the gift a strong symbolic value. The one shoulder blade will be with the Anglican Church in England and the other in Cologne. One could say it's a show of unity among Christians. St. Alban bearing both Catholic and Anglican churches on his shoulders through the modern age. The shoulder bone is put into a box which is sealed Later, it will be taken to England in a specially made container. Four and a half months later, end of June 2002, a delegation of St. Albans comes to Cologne. Dean Christopher Lewis and a small group of parishioners visit St. Pantaleon. The relic is sent off in a special ceremony. The following morning the group leaves for England. 36 pilgrims partly from the Catholic parish of St. Pantaleon and from the neighbouring Anglican parish in Cologne accompany the English group back to St. Albans. Pastor von Steinitz has the valuable gift in his case and doesn't let it out of sight. The official handover is to take place in St. Albans. Crossing the channel from Calais to Dover. Arrival in St. Albans. A warm welcome for the travellers. The BBC has come to report the historic homecoming. I think it is a, a very good sign of unity. Uh, people often talk about unity. It's one of those words rather like love or truth or beauty which you need actually to tie down, you need to express it in, uh, uh, in signs as well as in words. And this is a sign of the uh, unity uh, in Christ uh, which we share and our unity in our respect for Alban and for his sacrifice uh, for the faith. The precious gift is brought to the cathedral in a procession. The hosts have chosen a romantic route along an idyllic street past wonderful parks.
On a slight hill, the beautiful cathedral comes into view. Well, it's absolutely wonderful. And in the procession that we had from the coach when it arrived from the ancient Roman Basilica back up to the Abbey, it was this huge sense of Alban coming home. It was just wonderful, wonderful. I can't, can't begin to describe how lovely it is. Saturday, 27th of June, 2002. The public ceremony to hand over the relics to St. Albans Cathedral begins. People are always asking whether the shrine is a place of burial. Wir werden oft gefragt, ob der Schrein eine Beerdigung darstellt. And now it will be. Jetzt wird es wirklich der Fall sein. After the hymns, Bible readings and sermon, the ceremony reaches its climax. The relic is carried into the cathedral to the empty shrine of St. Alban. Pastor Peter von Steinitz hands over the holy shoulder bone to Dean Christopher Lewis. St. Albans is back home once again.
it sort of enhances the Abbey, which is a wonderful place. Um, people describe the Abbey as being both homely and holy, and that's true. And Alban represents both of those facts. He's come home, and it's a place of great holiness. So for the Abbey, we can't quite believe all this is happening. Um, and the generosity uh, of the gift is, is literally beyond description and beyond price. It's, it's just, well, it leaves us almost speechless. At the end of a very special day with a special atmosphere, the bishop invites his guests to celebrate in his private garden, just a stone's throw away from the cathedral. <laughs>